Hello, my name is Peter Mitev and I'll be doing a short presentation today on the latest developments of VRA-RT running on GPUs. Today is 14th of May 2010 and obviously any information provided will be valid as of today. So in 2009 at SIGGRAPH in the United States we showed a research that showed how we can run VRA shaders on GPUs so we got quite a boost there. And the thing is that today we are actually showing VRA RT, which is practically a completed product, running on GPUs. So today I'm going to use 3ds Max interface, but we will have the same solution available for Maya probably in the next two months. So the first thing we really have to understand is that VRA, VRA RT, and VRA RT running on GPUs are three completely different products. But unlike the competitors, these three products actually manage to shade and light the same and in the same way. This is extremely important for production pipelines where you do not want to redo your shaders, redo your materials, or you don't want to export a lot of your data in other applications because that will actually waste a lot of time. With V-Ray, you can fluently switch the three rendering solutions on the fly and you don't have to worry about not being able to render the same materials because V-Ray, V-Ray RT as well as V-Ray RT running on, running on GPUs will render the same result seamlessly without you having to worry about your setups. So that's very important. So V-Ray is a full-blown production rendering tool that you would find in 3ds Max as well as Maya available. So if we hit render here, we will get the production render working on this setup. And what we can see is six cores rendering this scene. So the reason we see 12 buckets is because we actually have hyper-threading enabled. So that doesn't really bring too much into the rendering power. So all in all, we have six physical cores rendering at this moment. So as I said, V-Ray RT will follow all the settings of V-Ray. So all I need to do to switch to V-Ray RT is to make sure that we have V-Ray RT enabled here in the active shader. Switch to the active shader and fire it. So right now we have V-Ray RT running on CPUs and we can see that we get the interactive setup. So all I need to do is just change anything in the scene and then V-Ray RT will instantly follow all of my changes. So I can change my shaders all of my setups and uh, I'm not going to go into any more details because we already have presentations on this on YouTube so you can check that out there. So what I want to emphasize on is the speed. So currently we have around 635,000 k-pads that is ray traces per second so this kind of gives us an idea about the performance of the particular system that I'm using. So right now I'm using all in all about 20 gigahertz render power to render this image out. So, as I said, in the beginning V-Ray, V-Ray RT and V-Ray RT on GPUs will follow the same setup and they will be able to render the same shaders in the same way. So you don't have to break your pipeline and you don't have to quit using your old material libraries with V-Ray. Okay, so I will close this down now and I will close my rendering engine running in the background and I will start the GPU based rendering tool. That's all I did. Obviously in the final version of V-Ray you will not have to do this. It will be simply an option in a drop down menu somewhere in 3ds Max. So let's see how that changed our rendering speed. In the beginning we will need to wait a few seconds for the scene to be transferred to the GPUs and for all the materials to be compiled to run on the GPU. So there is a longer initial phase in the beginning. Okay, this is the feedback that we get from the GPUs and if you take a look here, instead of having a number of 500 or 600, I have 10,000, over 10,000 k paths which are ray traces per second. This actually means that we have about a boost of 20 times with the GPUs. So probably the first question that would pop up in your mind is what kind of GPUs I'm using at the moment. At the moment. So this are, these are the new GTX 480 graphics cards from NVIDIA. I'm actually using three of them at this particular moment. So 
these graphics cards are considered to be more of a gaming cards rather than production cards so we are waiting for the new solutions coming from Nvidia in the next few months with the new Tesla and the new Quadro boards. Okay, so important thing to notice is that we still get the same interactivity. We don't lose that with the GPU. And you can see the kind of quick refinement that we get. I can also set up my shaders. So if I open my truck shader here, I can still change the colors and the GPUs will be able to catch that up and render it in real time. So that is quite a boost, right? So let's try to open a different scene that gives us even more information on how the GPU solution works in Viri RT. So if we take a look we will see that we have about 4.7 million polygons in this scene. So, in the same way now I will switch back to my software renderer so that we can compare the speed of my system running on CPUs and afterwards running on GPUs. So this is quite a resolution. So right now we are going through that initial process where Vray has to prepare the scene and start rendering it. So with the CPU solutions this is quite faster and it's kind of slower on the GPU so that's sort of a limitation there. So we'll need to wait for a few more seconds for Vray to be able to calculate this number here and we'll take a look at it. Okay so this is after waiting for over a minute and this is the kind of feedback that I get from my CPUs which are in total about 20 gigahertz render power. Okay, let's close this down and start the GPU version of RT. So right now, as I mentioned, we'll have to wait a little longer for the scene to prepare, so I'll pause the recording. Okay, and if we take a look at the same number here, we will see that instead of, instead of having 150 thousand we have over six one I'm sorry 150,000 ray traces we have over six million ray traces so this is actually about six million sixty six thousand ray tracers so the kind of performance boost that we just got with V-Ray running on GPUs was over definitely over 20 times it's actually more close to 40 Okay, so that's kind of the performance boost that we get with the new GTX graphics cards. And this resolution that we're rendering at the moment is about 1200 by 500 or so. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to use the Viri line of products because we don't force you to change your shading and lighting setups. All you need to do is just change the rendering engine and you will get instantly this kind of boost within your system. So this solution will also be available for Maya in the near future. So let's open up a different scene and I want to show you that at this moment we are not really dependent on the graphics cards to hold our video which means that we can render practically any resolution that can fit into our 3ds Max interface and we don't care about that even if we use the graphics cards. So let's take a look at the setup here. 